photograph is a single moment in time, frozen forever. Panels are sort of like that, right? Since it's a still image? Well, this one has a speech balloon, and that means that time is passing while people are talking, so... No, not really. But surely we know that time always passes between panels, since it takes time to read one and move to the next, right? No? Not always? Well, then at least bigger panels always take up more time than smaller ones, right? No? Look, if you thought the blue police box made things wibbly-wobbly timey-wimey, then you haven't spent too much time trying to figure out how time works in comics. I'm Andrea Gilroy, and this is Comics Crash Course. Now, think about how you experience time in a film. It passes, well, in time. Now, that might seem obvious to the point of being silly, but I promise you it's not. You can pause a film, but if you do, it stops. The creator of a film, in other words, controls how you interact with the film in time. Reading prose is different. You can stop reading any time you want. You have to keep reading to continue. Wanting to continue the story means that there's some momentum pushing you forward, but in many texts you're also rewarded for slowing down or stopping and rereading rather than just barreling full speed through. In other words, in reading, you control the pace. Comics are a little bit more like prose than film in that regard, but they add some new wrinkles. Because comics aren't just prose, but they also have images, like film. But unlike film, those images are static and juxtaposed across space rather than moving and changing in time. And that means, for comics, space is time. But just to keep things exciting, don't forget what Einstein taught us, that with space and time, relativity is in play. Unfortunately, this is the creative arts and not science, so there's no fancy formula. You see, if you think of space as time, then you might think that moving through space is always moving in time, but that's not always true. Several panels might take up a whole row, but mean to be depicting different aspects of the same setting in the same moment. This is something that McLeod calls an aspect-to-aspect -aspect transition. A single panel could represent a frozen moment in time, like a photograph, but it could also represent several seconds or even minutes of time, depending on the context and details within the border of the panel. And there's no reason size has anything to do with the time a panel represents. Now, often, bigger panels tend to represent longer periods of time. But you can just as easily have two panels of the same size that are different time spans. Or see the rules switch up to serve the artist's and writer's needs in the moment and on the page. But this is because space is time, and it's relative, subjective, and negotiable. Because, as I briefly mentioned before, panels and gutters are both narrative elements, organizational elements, design elements. They serve many purposes. And this is because... Gutters and panels act both as spatial and temporal markers, narrative elements, but they're also organizational and design components, which means you get things like this. This trick is sometimes called a polyptic, the same image across several panels. Now what does this say about time passing, or about space? If we usually treat a panel as a single moment, this highlights the fact that panels often include several moments within them but it does so by physically breaking up the drawing itself in a more sort of compositional, designy way. Now this trick gets used a lot of ways. Sometimes it's used to stretch out a moment, to make something feel like it's lingering. Other times it's to show how fast a particular moment is, almost like it's a slow-mo shot. But then there's moments like this. This is about theme and emotion, rather than pointing to speed and time, pointing to the fact that Daredevil feels trapped and fractured. What better way to visualize that than to break up his face, put him behind bars? In this case, the gutters themselves become a kind of trapping process. It's really interesting. Another fascinating aspect of space and time in comics, one that differentiates it from prose and film, is more about how we're trained to consume media than about how time and space passes itself. You see, in film, we literally can't see what's coming next, and we can't see what has happened once it's gone. We can only see the frame in front of us. That's how the medium works. Prose is different. There's a whole page in front of us. However, as we're reading, we necessarily focus on a small portion of the text at a time. 
there's a lot of science that attempts to examine where our eyes go when we read and how we jump between words and phrases and how much of each word we actually are reading as we move forward. But ultimately, there's a limit to how much we're able to perceive at one point in time. Most people, for instance, maybe read a word without stopping to perceive each letter, but it gets harder to do that for phrases and harder still for sentences, lines, and paragraphs. We're aware that there's more text to come and that we've passed some text, but we can't really perceive it without stopping and reading what we're doing. Comics are a little bit different because we perceive images differently than we perceive text. We can perceive aspects of images without seeing a whole image. You can look at a comics page and have a sense of what's coming in the next panel without closely reading the text in every panel. So you might know that a character is going to appear in the next panel, even though you haven't read the next panel yet. There's also no rules about what order you read the different aspects of the page. I know some people who like to stop and look at the whole page and see all the images on a page and then go back and read the text more carefully. I know others who are very fastidious about moving from panel to panel to panel. But I think, and you might disagree with me, my experience has been that when you read a comic, it's impossible to not at least be somewhat peripherally aware of the myriad of other messages, especially those right before the panel you're reading and right after the panel you're reading, on the page. And as such, reading comics itself is a really odd experience in time. You don't have quite as much control as you do in a prose text, where it all stops when you stop. There's too much peripheral awareness for that. But there's also not the same level of control on the artist's part as on a film, where the text just moves on without you. Details of the text are controlled by your attention, not to mention something as simple and important as the page turn. That's in your control. But other parts are sort of forcing you on. Now, in the last episode, I talked about the gutter as a space of interpretation of a reader's power. Now, between this intense negotiation of meaning and this intricate mediation of time and space, I think you'll understand why I find the act of reading comics so fascinating. And what's even more fascinating to me than how complicated it all is, is how easy it seems. I touched on this a little bit at the end of the last episode, but I'd like to talk about it a little bit more. For some reason, despite all of these subjective shifting rules about time and space and meaning, comics are generally thought of as easy to read. And for the most part, I think they kind of are. I mean, obviously I get the theoretical complexity. That's the point of these last two videos. But on the other hand, I read them for fun. And I find the majority of comics are pretty breezy and fun to read. I'm usually able to read them quicker than prose, for example. It doesn't take me as long to read a 300-page graphic novel as it does to read a 300-page novel. But I do know people who find reading comics really difficult. And interestingly, these are usually folks who never read them growing up. When I ask why, it's not surprising based on some of the things I've discussed in this and the last video. One common issue I hear from these people is that it's difficult to make sense of when to read what. Do I look at the pictures and the words, vice versa? Do I do one panel at a time, or do I read more holistically? How long should I spend with each panel and each page? And another issue I'll hear is that there's too much information to parse. Folks who are used to prose and images, but maybe not dealing with both of them at the same time, feel overwhelmed by the amount of information. And it is a lot to navigate, especially when both prose and pictures are sending you a million messages. And then comics are constantly reminding you to connect the dots in the gutter between every panel. Oh, and time and space are relative and contextual in every panel as well. All this is to say, the panels and the spaces between them are the beating heart of comics. And while it might seem like the most elementary part, they're also perfect examples of what makes comics one of the most fascinating and complex media humans have ever managed to create. Next time, we're going to scale up a little, and we'll start talking about pages. See you then.